Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We have a heated discussion coming from the prophetic spoken by Lynette. And we are about to be blessed if you have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to his people and to those of you who are in the Valley of Decision. Welcome, Lynette, and thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So lay on well, us what God has laid on your heart. I was up early this morning. I want to say about 3, 3.30 or so. I woke up, I was praying and looking through YouTube, and I happened to uh, hear something from a ministry that uh, I'd never heard of before. It just kind of was there. Um, getting right to the point, God gave me confirmation on what was spoken, and what was spoken was the words suddenly and transition. And what that meant was whatever is getting ready to happen. I know that a lot of us have been hearing about asteroids and all kinds of different things like collapses and plagues and all this type of thing. But there's something that the Spirit of the Lord revealed, and what was said was suddenly transition. Something has already been set in motion, and the Spirit of the Lord said, do not ask me to stop it. The people that are going to be affected by it in a negative way, he said, do not pray for them. They had their window of opportunity. They had their chance. And he said, do not stop it. And it was really strong, and, and I could... I could sense and tell that the Lord was very, he is, he was and he is very serious about whatever this is coming up. So I was always taught by my spiritual mentors and pastors and teachers that I've had that anything that you get in the spirit, it must be backed up with the, with the word of God. So the, the Lord did give me scripture. And of course, I called uh, Sister Pat before I said anything or released anything to get confirmation and counseling. And what was ironic about it was the very scripture that the Lord gave me, he was giving it to her as I was saying it out of my mouth. You remember that, Pat? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, yes. it was just so <laughs> powerful. It was so powerful. And I was like, oh, my goodness, Lord, you are on it. This, so that was confirmation. I just like to make sure I'm just one of those people that, um, I take the word of God seriously. I handle it very, very carefully. And I always want to make sure that I do not misrepresent or say anything that he did not say. So the scripture that the Lord gave both of us was Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 14. And it states, as for you, do not pray for these people. Do not raise up a cry or a prayer on their behalf. For I will not be listening when they call out to me in their time of disaster. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. And then there's uh, Jeremiah 7.16, where he, is, he admonished Jeremiah also too. As for you, do not pray for these people. Do not offer a plea or a petition on their behalf. And do not beg me, for I will not listen to you. I was like, Lord, wow. Yep. <laughs> and he said, they had their window of opportunity. They had their chance. They had their opportunity. And the Lord reminded me, I will not strive with man always. Something is coming, people. Something that we've never seen before. Something's been set in motion. That's what the Lord revealed to me. Something has already been set in motion. He's already made his mind up. It's going to be done. And it's going to be, as some people would say, oh, it was the terrible day of the Lord or, the, you know, the day of judgment. That's what, I, what the Lord was telling me. It's, 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 it's judgment. It's not the end of the world, but it's going to feel like it to some. God's going to protect his children. But it's the same thing as if, if you were in a building the Lord gave me this, this example. You're in a building, and maybe we can use a building that collapsed. And there were God's children in that building. Now, God's children are in that building that collapsed, but they did not perish. And God said, it's going to be that intense that 
the, the children of God and the children that of the of, of disobedience will all be in the same thing. But the children of disobedience they will perish, but we will behold and see the reward of the wicked. So God is saying, and, and thank you, Father, for reminding me of that. He said, "Fear not, fear not, fear not." I remember him saying that along with this. So the admonishment and the encouragement is that I will be with you. Do not be afraid. Amen. I'm, I'm not going to let anything happen to you. He's giving me right now. He said, remember the three Hebrew boys. The king set that fire seven times hotter. It was so hot that when the guard opened the door to throw them in, they got burnt up. And when they went in there in that fire, seven times hotter, and the king said, did we not send in three? But I see four. And one of them looks like the son of God. He said, I will be with you as I was with the three Hebrew boys. So whatever this is that's coming on the earth, God says, it's been set in motion. Don't ask me to stop it. I'm not going to stop it. It's going to happen. But, but I'm going to protect you. And it's going to be happening soon. He didn't give me a day or a time, but it's coming soon. God said, that's why I need you to get in your word. I need you to pray. You should be praying anyway. Pray more and give God that fast that he's asked you to do. Even if it's just 24 hours, God always blesses our efforts. He does, and he's so merciful and compassionate. He knows what we can do. He knows some of us can go more than 24 hours. What you can do, you need to do. But something has already been set in motion. It's not going to be stopped. And God is saying, you can, cr you can cry and pray all you want to. I'm not going to hear you. I'm not stopping this. This is, this is my judgment. Amen. But don't, don't be afraid. And that's all I've been led to say. I don't want to say more or less mm -hmm. than what Father told me. But that's, that's what he gave me for the past. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you very much. Let God so get the glory blessed. for that word and let people be blessed by it and his people be comforted by it. Now, what I want to add is what the Lord laid on my mind while she was speaking. And what that is, and Lynette, this is, I don't know if you've heard this video or not that I did years ago, but I did it so many years ago, I know it was God that had to bring it to my mind because I certainly wasn't thinking about it. This was a dream I had about a flood. And what I saw coming from the distance, I'm walking, I'm coming down a ramp, you know, like a handicapped ramp, uh, getting ready to go around the corner to go inside a building. So I'm going down the ramp and I hear this water rushing around the corner. And it's, it's flying, you know, like the river rapids when it turns and curves and all of that. And the water is rushing. And it rushed so hard around the corner that a big body of water splashed up over my head. But not one drop got on me. And mm. then I heard the voice say, go inside. So I went around to the front and went inside the building. Inside the building were a bunch of God's people, born-again Christians, gathered together. And they knew they were there on assignment. And while we were inside, a man's voice rose up in the crowd and said, Everyone, stay inside until this thing passes. And right before he said that, I had stepped out the door because we heard this crackling noise. And we were wondering, what was it? And I'm peeping, I'm peeping my head out the door to see what it is. And I'm looking down the street. And now the flood has passed. And now it's starting to get a little dark, like, you know, around dusk. And the street lights are starting to come on. And I see the reflection of the street. The surface of the street from the distance looks like it is freezing up, like ice is forming all over it and getting closer and closer to us. But when it comes within view and within focus, I realize I'm not seeing the reflection of ice forming. I'm seeing a swarm of beetles crawling on the street. Oh my. It's like a parade <clears throat> of beetles, black beetles with shiny backs. Ooh. And they're walking down the street. 
And that's what the crackling noise was. And that's when the voice rose up and said, everyone, stay inside and close the doors until this passes. And when all of that mess passed and they went on uh, uh, their merry way down the road, then uh, one of the, uh, the, the women and one of the other guys, they both grabbed brooms. And they opened the door. The voice, you know, let them know it was okay to go out. They opened the door and they started sweeping up the debris left behind from the, the, the pieces of, of bugs that were left. And they, uh, you know, they, you know, these were the dead bugs that were left behind. And they were sweeping mm -hmm. it up, cleaning up the street. Now, right after they did that, they also got a call in the building. The phone rang. And we had been up that night waiting for God's instruction. And somebody from an emergency crew called up and asked if a lot of the church people could come and help because there was a major disaster that took place, some major tragedy or crisis. I don't know what caused the crisis. But the bottom line was there were a whole lot of people that needed emergency medical aid. And they needed a lot of us to rush over there and help. And they were calling for volunteers. And a lot of us hadn't had any sleep. But we volunteered to go and help them with the wounded. There were a lot of wounded. A lot. So it stops right about there. But I just want to yeah. share with you that what that told me was no matter what flies overhead, y'all, no matter what threats come over us and looks like it's going to drop down on us like a hammer waiting for that axe to fall, it will not touch you. It shall not stand. It shall not come to pass. But you must believe. You must trust in God during the whole transition, as Lynette called it. And then you have to remember this. At the end of that dream, you know, when they were starting to clean up the debris, all mm -hmm. these Christians that you guys hate, they're going to be the ones doing the cleanup. Mm. They're going to they're going to be the ones helping with the food, helping with the meds, helping other people. They're going to be the ones coming to a lot of people's aid. Yeah. And then on top yeah. of that, on top of that, God is going to use, he's going to use his church for cleanup. He's going to use his body for, for helping, for administering, for ministry. So mm -hmm. I just want to let you guys know that God is getting ready to do something. And while That's he's right. got his foot on one group of people, he's going to hand, have his hand undergirding another group. And he's going to be sending them on divine assignments to help the wounded. And that's all I'm going to yes. say on that. Thank you very much, Lynette. Thank you for sharing that, too. It ties in, and it sounds like mm, whatever's coming. That It's all flowing together. Mm -hmm. Confirmation. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Amen. God bless you guys, and I hope this blesses your souls. In Jesus' name, be safe, be in Christ, stay in God's face. And whatever you do, keep your eyes and ears peeled to the bosom of God, and he will direct you. You don't have to worry, because God will shed his light on your darkness if you stay close to him. And you will be saved. God bless you. And let me add this one last thing. For those of you who are worried about the government shutdown, God will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. In Jesus' name, amen.